Well, Dr. Bradley, thank you for being with us today. Uh, today, we're going to talk about your chapter in the forthcoming second edition of Think Biblically, Recovering a Biblical Worldview. Uh, and that's got a lot of essays from faculty of the Masters University. It's edited by Dr. Chow and uh, Dr. John MacArthur. So we're really excited about that. It comes out in April. And you wrote a chapter, one of six new chapters in the second edition, titled Seeing Mathematics Through the Lens of Scripture. Seeing mathematics clearly yes. through the lens of Scripture. That's right. Why uh, Why did you choose this topic? So um, I chose this topic for a number of reasons. Maybe the one that you might find interesting, one of the reasons. I did not like math growing up at all. And yet today I'm a mathematician by profession. And the transformation came when I started to see mathematics clearly through the lens of Scripture, actually. That's kind of where the change happened. And so one of the reasons I wanted to write this book is that I just want other folks to see mathematics the way that I see it, which is from a biblical perspective. And so I think I can really resonate with folks. I mean, math is not everyone's cup of tea. It's not my cup of tea. It used to not be my cup of tea either. I mean, it comes across as a little bit dry and boring and procedural. Um, but I actually think that if folks really knew what mathematics was from a biblical perspective, they'd find it fascinating. And so that was a, a real motivation for me writing this chapter. Amazing. Now, we're not going to be able to get into all of it today, but I think for some people, it's like, okay, the Bible and math, where, can you just kind of, what, what's a little bit of the connection there between yeah. uh, the Bible and math? So one way I'll start is usually when we say the word math, I don't know, I, I used to just think arithmetic, like, what do you mean? Do you multiply big numbers all day? Are we talking about like finance and calculating the family budget or something? So I just want to start by saying Mathematics is so much more than the stuff that we learn in school. So whatever you, whatever readers are thinking as they approach this chapter, I'm just going to say, you know, whatever preconceived ideas you have, just hold them off for a little bit. At least until after you've read the chapter. Until after you've read the yeah. chapter. So maybe one way to see this, and I mentioned a little bit of this in the chapter. So when we think back to Genesis 1, God spoke light into existence. I mean, we have light here all around us. It's outside, right everywhere. You may or may not know that there is a treasure trove of advanced, beautiful, sophisticated mathematical ideas just behind the concept of light. Okay. And so, and then when we think about, you know, the Holy Spirit hovering over the waters, when you think about water, even at the molecular and subatomic level, there's a lot of advanced mathematical ideas going on there. So I just mentioned that because math is sort of foundational to the world around us. I mean, it certainly is in the sciences, but even if you're not, you know, an actual scientist, I mean, you breathe air and you're exposed to light all of the time. And so I think one thing that's so encouraging is just to be reminded God's purview and sovereignty extends over all parts of his creation, even the mathematics that's sort of invisible and sometimes overlooked. But that's how I'd kind of make the connection, at least no, that's from, great. from a first point. point. That's fantastic. What and you've kind of hit on it probably a little bit, but what do you hope you know readers of of this chapter will take away? Yeah, so I I just hope that folks will be encouraged. I mean, when we think about subjects that we can approach from a biblical lens, I mean, it should be everything, but maybe it's like yeah, everything but math because it's just numbers. So what's there to say? So I think one thing that I, I'm really hoping for is that folks will number one understand that mathematics is not just arithmetic. It's more than that. And then also to be encouraged every time they engage with this subject to be reminded that it is part, it's under God's sovereignty. I mean, you can ask, why did he, why did he give us a world that's so understandable? Why would he give us a language like mathematics that we can study? Well, is it to like, you know, live in the world better and to come up with cool technology? Yes. But ultimately, this is all for his honor and for his glory. So one thing I, I hope that folks will take away, they'll, they'll kind of see just, again, God's care for us. And, and this is just another avenue by which our hearts can be lifted up in worship and adoration to him. I love that. And I didn't tell you I was going to ask this, but we should talk about the Think Biblically conference yes. that just took place. Yes. Uh, you were one of the featured speakers. Yeah. Uh, how was the conference? I think it was great. Um, it's really encouraging to sort of see the book in live action where you get to hear different faculty kind of speak from their disciplines um, from the lens of scripture. So I had the, uh, the joy to talk about some ideas in math and science and artificial intelligence 
kind of wrapping that up in the conference's theme, which was God's sovereignty over the ages. So we just kind of took a look over historically in the past, where have these ideas come from, what's going on in the present, what's happening in the future. I think there's a little bit of temptation to kind of be enamored by the technology. Wow, this is so cool. Look at all these things that we can do. But again, kind of keeping these things in perspective and sort of thinking, you know, Human ingenuity is really cool, but it pales in comparison to the majesty of our Lord. And so having the opportunity to talk about that, to fellowship with other believers was really a joy. That's fantastic. So for you, uh, those of you who are listening, the Think Biblically conference uh, took place. Those videos are eventually going to be available on our YouTube channel. So be on the lookout for those. We'll also share that on social media. And then, as we said, uh, the second edition of Think Biblically, Recovering a Biblical Worldview will be available uh, in April. Um, it's on Amazon. You can pre-order it right now. You should go ahead and do that. And thank you again uh, for being with us here today, Dr. Bradley. Thank you, Mason.